Hi, this is Ray and what we're going to make today is one of these pen trays. Uh, very useful for keeping your pens in decent condition, either on your desk or in storage. And it's made from some very basic materials with some very basic equipment. Let me show you. This is everything that you're going to need to make one of these yourselves. Um, a ruler. Uh, I like to use one of these. These grid lines on it are going to prove very useful in making it. Um, some kind of glue. Now you can either use a traditional glue stick, but for speed uh, I'm going to be using a permanent glue roller in this demonstration. Also uh, some sort of scoring tool. I use the screwdriver attachment on my Swiss Army knife. It's very effective. Um, a knife of some sort, a sharp knife. I'm going to be using a, a utility knife. You're going to need some fairly thin card. Um, I'm using white, uh, but that's not really important. And some slightly thicker card. Here I'm using um, a, a black grained report cover. Um, it doesn't need to be too thick, not as thick as you think, because your secret ingredient is this. Some medium thick or corrugated card which is going to strengthen the whole piece. Okay, um, you're also going to need available uh, a pencil. Um, we'll see what that's for shortly. So your first step is to take a piece of your paper that the main piece is going to be made out of. Now, I think that's probably a little bit long. Um, this is standard A4, you might be alright with letter, but I like to trim a length off of um, the end here, uh, because for me, um, if it's a, a little bit shorter, it's more useful to me. I mean, the one that I'm, I'm going to make now will probably hold um, 9 or 10 pens, which I would say is probably enough. So I'm just going to slice the end off and, uh, oh look, it's another free bookmark. Um, what I'm left with uh, is obviously a rectangle which is a little bit shorter than A4. Um, now by aligning that against the grids on my cutting mat I can make sure that it's going to be um, at least fairly square. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some scoring to make the sides. Now it's important that if you're using a, a textured card like this you're working with the proper side facing up at this point. Now what you need to do is measure an equal distance in from each of the edges and score quite firmly so that you can fold up the sides. Now. This is where this measuring ruler comes in handy because I can use these lines here to get a consistent width on the side. And here I'm using four of these little boxes, um, which I suppose is equivalent to about two centimetres. And then score firmly all the way along. Do the same on each of the four edges of your piece of card. Edge number three. And finally, edge number four. Now, you're also at this point going to use your um, sharp knife, and it doesn't matter which, but on one side of each of these little squares that you formed, you're going to need to cut from the point where it meets the next line to the very edge. Uh, you need to be careful when doing this and take basic precautions. Key among which is having a cutting mat so that you don't damage your table surface. Okay. 
So what I've now got is a piece with four little cuts in it. And what I'm going to do is fold along each of those score lines. Now if you have a, a bone folder you can make those creases a bit sharper. For the sake of speed I'm not going to do that on this occasion. Fold over at the score marks on the little tabs as well. And you can probably see how this is going to come together into a, a sort of box style tray construction uh, like that. So what we're going to do now is use a little either glue or in my case a roller to just get some adhesive on those tabs. an awful lot on there am I? There we go. Quick running repair there. Still not getting very much. Okay, well let's use the glue. A good bit of glue. Each corner. And then just squeeze that together. Let the glue dry. You could probably use some binder clips if you wanted to hold those in shape while they dry. Again for speed, I'm not going to be doing that. Now when you finish the job you've formed this sort of box style tray which I suppose looks like the bottom half of a box of, uh, a box of chocolates. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the concertina inside which we're going to make out of white card. So a piece of white card which I'm going to have to start by making the same height as the box that I made. Now if you'll remember from the box I took one, two, three, four lines off of each side. I'm going to take four lines from here I'm also going to take four lines from the bottom and in fact I'm going to take just a tiny bit more than four lines so that this fits neatly inside. Okay, so there is my piece of white card which is going to become um, a concertina. Now, you can measure this very carefully of course, but what I'm going to do is use the lines on the cutting mat. Now, these lines um, unfortunately are an imperial so they're about I think an inch wide or two and a half centimeters. Um, actually they work reasonably well so if you're comfortable with with inches you know knock yourself out. Um, I'm going to be using a two and a half centimeter measure um, but I'm going to go down each of these lines one way and score along each of them. And you're currently thinking, whoa, those are perhaps a little bit wide. But don't panic, this isn't the end of the matter. Now 
Now as you'll see when we start putting this together, this doesn't have to be super accurate, um, but if you're aiming for some degree of uniformity, it's quite handy for this to be done fairly closely to the measures. Now what I'm going to do at this point is turn it over and position it so that the lines that I've already scored are halfway between the squares on this particular sheet because what I can then do is go on the main lines again to score on the other side so that halfway between each pairs of lines that are scored on the front side there's a score on the reverse side. Now that will enable me to fold this up very easily like a concertina, alternating mountain folds and valley folds. Now as you'll see I didn't measure this out precisely when I turned the thing over so when we come to fold it it may look a little bit higgledy-piggledy while I'm turning it into a concertina but once we then stretch that out a bit to put it in the box it will be absolutely fine. Of course if you're obsessive about these things you'll, you'll get out your rulers and, and pencils and you'll be measuring this precisely. And if you want to do that it's about as I say two and a half centimetres between pairs of mountain folds and pairs of valley folds. Um, the one alternating with the other. Uh, nearly there now, just that one and this short one at the end. Now don't worry about that short one at the end because we're going to be chopping the very end of this off anyway. Um, but what I'm going to do is start at the end which, which hasn't got the odd little left over and fold concertina style, turning over each time When I was young, you used to do this to um, make a fan. I'm sure some of you will have memories of doing something similar at primary school. I always thought, but that's not like the sort of fan that my grandparents brought home from their visit to Spain. That was very nice and all lacy and used to fold out along a different plane from this. And as you can see, this is a little bit just slightly higgledy piggledy because the measurements weren't accurate and the mountain and valley folds aren't exactly spaced out halfway. But once you've done that, oh, and that one's folded not quite on a on the line. Let's fix that. There you go. That's better. Yeah, that did go wrong at the end there. All right, there we go. So there is your concertina fold. And at this point, if you were making a fan, you'd stretch it out like that and fan yourself. Oh, surprisingly effective, actually. Um, so that's going to form the bed on which your pens are going to sit. Now, at each end of this construction, you need a, a, a valley fold. So at this end, I'm going to cut it off at the last valley fold. So just use the ruler to make it precise. And what you can do when you offer this up to the box, if, if those concertinas seem a little bit scrunched up and you think, oh, I wouldn't get a pen in there, you can cut one or more of them off so that they stretch out a little bit further. I think, though, that's going to be absolutely fine for our box. So let's have a look. Let's pop it inside. And, um, yeah, I would say those spacings are just about right. If I were to put a pen in there, yeah, I'd say that's right. Okay. So, back out it pops. 
And what I'm going to do is, is put a generous lot of glue down here because it's just the bottom of those mountain folds that are going to kind of cling on to the base there. So you're going to need a fairly generous amount there we go, of glue to, to hold them down. Now try and avoid letting it stick down before you've sort of evened it out a little bit. They don't all have to be the same, I mean apart from anything else, some pens are thinner than others. But when it looks about right, just give it a gentle push down and what you can then do, if you want to, is, is use your scoring tool to run down each of the valley folds and make sure there's some contact adhesion going on. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, you've got these little bits at the side that, um, frankly, you're not going to be able to do anything with. What you can do, and I can show you this on um, a smaller one that I made, is you can glue these parts here to the side. And that's what I've done on this half-size one. You can see there that I've got the concertina, I've got the concertina slots, and then I've glued the very last fold um, to the edge inside of the box and, and that's a way that you can go, that makes things quite neat. But otherwise this is pretty much done and it's, it's ready to, um, to hold some pens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pens, yeah. What you can do now is you can, because this hasn't got an awful lot of um, strength. Putting the concertina in and gluing it in is actually giving it, giving it more strength, but it's still not going to, uh, it still doesn't feel particularly solid. So what I like to do at this point is get a, a, a sort of medium stiffness piece of card, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that onto the, onto the base here to give it a little bit of a platform and, and give the thing a bit of stability. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position it on there, um, grab the pencil and then just do a little pencil line around each of the corners, holding the lid as still as I can while I do that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my knife to cut inside those lines. I don't want this to protrude out from underneath the piece because that would ruin the look of it. I want it to be slightly smaller than the box to whose bottom I'm going to be gluing it. Yes, I said bottom, don't snigger. Um, there we go. Two, three cuts. Four cuts. There's nothing better than the sound and the feel of that happening. Um, so that will now fit underneath there. So what I'm going to do is turn the whole thing over. Um, and I want this side that, you know, I don't want anyone to see that side really. So I'm going to glue that to the bottom. That looks good. There's a just a little gap all the way around. That's fantastic. So, a bit more glue. All over the place. Didn't work out too well using the roller for speed, but having said that, the glue sticks fairly fast anyway. So, let's position that on there. Carefully, and give it a bit of a push down. If I get some pens in there, that will hold it down with their weight, especially if I get that nice big heavy Mont Blanc 149 on the case, a couple of 146s with it, that'll hold it down. And, and then the glue will dry and everything will be lovely. One of the things you can do while you're waiting for the glue to dry is to make another one of these 
um, half boxes uh, to use as a lid. Um, here's one of those that I did. Uh, what you're going to need to do, rather than cutting to one, two, three, four lines, make it four lines plus, uh, or sorry, minus a little bit, so that the sides that you make are slightly shorter and the lid itself is slightly bigger than this box. And then what I've done is I've strengthened the lid by putting some card inside, cutting it, having measured it in the same way, and then putting it inside. And that will then sit on top of your box so that, um, oh, I don't know, keep dust off your pens, you could you know, conceivably stack them as well. Um, so there we go, um, a nice quick little project and you can make any number of these in fairly short order. You don't have to stick to one colour, you could colour code your boxes for instance. Um, here, is a, here is a red one uh, with some nice coloured pens in it. Um, this is the mini one that I showed you earlier and uh, there's a little lid for that as well. Um, hopefully I've demonstrated that these are quick and easy to make um, and are, are really useful and functional. So I'd certainly encourage you to have a go and to come back and see future DIY videos um, that I'll make whenever the muse strikes me, I suppose. Bye-bye.